Ah, need calculation. All right. So here we go. Very simple. Uh, what I want to show you is group two, they like to come up this kind of uh, uh, similar looking kind of question, right? Plus minus. Very, very common. Uh, when barium metal is burned in air, all right, and oxide is formed. So I know very clearly it's barium oxide. Okay. Barium uh, and oxygen, right? So barium oxide. is formed which contains 81.1% barium by mass. So first thing, if we are in sec 3, sec 4, we will have think barium oxide is uh, this one. 2 plus 2 minus. Uh, all right? Well, but now uh, life is not so simple. Life is not just like that. So they ask you to calculate the formula of oxide. It must, uh, is it still BaO or could be something else? You don't know until you do a calculation. All right. So first thing, all right, uh, when you see 81.1% uh, of barium by mass, 81.1% by mass, Immediately, what is the formula and the step you undertake? Someone? What do you do? Immediately, you go to where? Empirical formula. Since sec 3, there's no other way to go. Don't think too much. This first part is the boring one. Okay, so here we go. This is called barium peroxide. In case you're not aware, because uh, there's a O2 here. Maybe I have a side question for you. Someone, what is the oxidation state of barium here? And therefore, the oxidation state of oxygen here. One more mark, go. Barium is plus two. Why you know barium is plus two? Because it's group two is fixed. Because if you go by the oxygen way, you always get it wrong. Because I give a clue just now. Like, I say this is a pyrox side. The oxygen here cannot say minus two. It is minus one. Plus, I give you a clue, it's pyrox side. Everyone okay? Huh? So group one, group two, the oxidation state is fixed. The oxygen therefore be the unfixed variable one. Okay, then we move, all right? So here we go. The second part is the more interesting one, a little bit more for three marks. First one, one mark, second one, three marks. Three marks is a lot, okay? Uh, when this oxide of uh, barium, which we know already, is added to water, so added to water, uh, barium hydroxide and another compound is formed, okay? When the solution is acidified, so you add some acid in. All right. Uh, add it to potassium iodide. So add to potassium iodide. Uh, potassium iodide, uh, let's have a different color. Say this green. Iodine is then produced. It's formed. Okay, got it. Suggest an explanation for this observation and write equation for the reactions occurring. So equation each of them, one mark. Write something, they give you one more mark maybe. All right. So... Uh, and they're very kind. They tell you it's plural. There's more than one equation. All right. Because as you read, there must be two reactions, right? One reaction is here to here. Second reaction is here to here. So obviously, it's two equations. All right. So we agree. Okay. So here we go. Uh, the first one, we should be able to do it, right? So uh, first equation, barium oxide. They never say state symbols. I'm not going to write. I'm not going to commit. All right. Uh, add into water. Forms one. Barium hydroxide. I know barium hydroxide very well. And they say another compound. What is the question mark compound here? Ah, that's the pink, correct? So what is this one? The pink color here. We don't know. Never mind. Then we go to the second one. Uh, for a while. I just scribble. When the solution is acidified and added to potassium iodide, iodine is produced. So as I always tell you all, you want to do more, you want to do uh, all your inorganic chemistry, which is all equation-based. It's very, very important that you make it visual for you. I always encourage. So uh, the solution, once again, is uh, either this one or this one, right? They're going to add it in somewhere here. Lah, just to get it in. Uh, add to what? They say acidified. Right? H plus. And add to potassium iodide. Now, potassium iodide, all this for you're interested in potassium or iodide? Forever. The potassium is just a spectator or counter ion. Make sense, everyone? Since sec 3, K plus got no use on. It's always soluble in the water. Make sense? So I'm looking at AI. I mean I minus AI. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then what did they say? They say iodine is formed. 
And I believe it's because I write out my second so-called own partial equation, uh, then I'm very comfortable of solving the question. If I just write the first one, I'm just guessing here and there. I might guess correct, I might guess wrongly. But second one confirms that my guess later in part one is correct. Why like that? Okay, so here we go. Uh, someone, what is that question mark? Who will you be thinking of? H2O2. How come you think of H2O2? Why? First of all, everyone should uh, appreciate this by now, right? It's called in the equation, whatever you eat, you shit. Right? I've been talking about it. I said inorganic coming out one. But the problem is if you eat it in, you eat barium, you eat oxygen, you eat hydrogen. The barium hydroxide itself over here already shit out the barium, the oxygen and hydrogen. So I got no leverage over this side. Make sense? I cannot guess much over there. All right. So I wouldn't know what is the question mark, to be honest, to be precise. It can be anything. It could be hydrogen gas or what? Which, although I tell you all, seldom a reaction produce a, an element. All right? So that's something that I wouldn't try one usually in a question. Now, then I think the clue is really the second part. is whereby I minus, all right, is this one. You should be very sensitive to I minus and I2. Okay? You know that this is oxidation. So in your answer, you're going to write this out in English on your own. And therefore, I'm very sure what? Uh, I'm very sure, first of all, H plus is always to acidify itself, don't get oxidized and reduced. Right? It's just to acidify the medium. So it must be something over here that get reduced. Which means over here, this must be a what? This must be a common oxidizing agent. And I immediately think of something we learned in redox, which is what? Which is A. H2O2, which has uh, the elements that I can still use from the left hand side, uh, is a common oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So again, we are crossing topics, inevitable. That's why I like to do inorganic chemistry towards the final stretch, the end, because it makes sense. Because we're utilizing all the skills we have together. Okay, so here I propose, therefore, I think it's H2O2, the question mark. I think it is perfect. Okay, so my first equation will therefore become this. All right, and my job is just to balance it. Uh, I think the first one, put the two there. I get one mark for balancing it. Consider done. Second one, I really know what is happening. So what should I do? Uh, but the equation is not balanced. How to balance it? Go to the good old days, redox equation. All right, this is the overall redox equation. So what we need to do is to do what? We need to take two half equation and balance it. Make sense? All right, so I erase the top part and then we move to the second part. Let me make sure this is recorded. Here we go, inorganic chemistry. It's not difficult, huh? inorganic, as I mentioned. The tricky one is transition matter, but yeah, it's not difficult. I just say it's very, very tricky. Okay, so uh, what about that? So we all know that I minus will undergo uh, oxidation to I2. So there's the oxidation uh, equation. So there's a two and two minus. This is oxidation. Uh, then uh, hydrogen peroxide comes out in the data booklet two times, right? You have to choose the one that is here, uh, that gets itself reduced. So it should look like this one. Okay, let me angle over. You are J2 student, I will proceed and tell you about Enoch Valley. I don't think, again, nothing wrong if you want, but I don't think it's necessary to put in the Enoch value and calculate to show. But we all know this is a redox reaction. Redox reaction, we need to check its feasibility. Or it may not be feasible. Make sense? One want to get oxidized, one want to get reduced. It doesn't mean it is confirmed. It's only possible, probable, all right? But it's not confirmed. So to, technically, to really confirm it, I need to calculate its E cell value or E not cell value. So uh, again, I write this down so at least you know hydrogen peroxide, which is the equation I chose for, for the oxidation, okay? Which I then uh, do a quick check here. Nothing wrong, you want to present this further because it's three marks anyway. I have enough time. For this but three marks means six minutes i think i should have enough time 
right? So plus 1.77 subtract off plus 0.54 is a positive value. So the reaction is spontaneous. Okay. So with that, uh, we can then combine them all together. Ooh, la, la. All right. Uh, what about that? So take a look at the electrons. Just nice. One left. I mean, two uh, electrons each. Left side and right side, right? So we want to say equation one, equation two, just one plus two. You get them together. And therefore, my answer eventually will be this. Uh, 2H plus 2I minus I2 plus 2H2O. I think this is the answer. If you would like to catch my latest videos, click on subscribe button right now. And click on the bell if you want to receive instant notifications once I've uploaded my latest video. If you would like to join my live chemistry classes and revision workshops, go on to winnerseducation.com and find out how you can score distinction for chemistry on a consistent basis, either in our center or online via Zoom. If you want to check out my online school, go on to passwithdistinction.com teachable.com you'll be able to learn chemistry concepts at your own pace and anywhere in the world topic by topic this is sean chua from winners education to your distinction in chemistry